Hi and welcome to tdcat.com. A very quick note if you've uh, tuned into this tutorial, as it were, this isn't going to be a quick one, okay? This isn't uh, going to be short to the point or anything. This is just me playing around and learning as I'm going along. It's one of them, all right? So just if you're not, not up for watching something that's 20, 25 minutes long, then you probably, wouldn't, you probably won't want to watch this one. For anyone else who does have a bit of time on their hands, what I'm going to be looking at today is uh, playing with Easy Drummer 2 and Ableton to just try and mimic a sound and uh, reproduce a clip, uh, sorry, reproduce a song. Uh, it's not really, well, is it a song or is it it's just really a drum sequence? Uh, I've recently watched the film Fargo. It's 20, 20 years old, Fargo. And I've only just got around to watching it. And anyway, it led me on to a series binge of watching season one and season two of uh, Fargo that's recently been done for television. The scores for those were done by a guy called Jeff Russo. And uh, he's uh, been sort of uh, working in music for a long time, but he's only more recently done sort of score stuff for TV and films. And one of the songs that he, as uh, one of the songs that he wrote for the TV series was this one. Uh, wrench and numbers and it's called wrench and numbers but it's actually relate wrench and numbers are actually two characters they're uh, they're hitmen they're these guys uh hitmen who come to um try and find uh find the murderer of um uh, sam hess i think it is isn't it and they turn up anyway you've got um wes wrench and and uh <clears throat> and grady numbers uh, and when they first come on scene or when they're just sort of first turning up, they play this track. And I'm just going to play a bit of it. I can't play too much of it because of copyright rules, but I'm just going to play a little bit for you now. Those who've seen the TV show might recognise this. I'm just going to spin on a bit now just so you can get the main main bit. Remember that? That's probably about all I'm going to get away with playing on uh, on YouTube. So uh, we are a little bit restricted in that respect. But that's the kind of sound I want to reproduce, and it's that that whole thing I want to reproduce. So I thought, well, the best place to do it for me, given the stuff I've got, is in Easy Drummer because I do have a lot of drums available in Native Instruments and in uh, in in Contact. But Easy Drummer is a dedicated dedicated drum plugin and hopefully I'll be able to produce something reasonable in that. So the first thing I had to think of, well, what sounds like this, those drums? It's got a really, really grungy sound to that. We can add the grungy sound later with a little bit more compression and uh, and a bit of extra EQ, and we could even possibly add a bit of noise over the top of it, some sort of you know tape noise or something, just to make it sound a little bit rougher around the edges. But that's all later. Well, what the first thing we've got to get down is the structure. So I'm just going to put the Easy Drum App plugin into a MIDI track here in the uh, arrangement view on, in Ableton. And here we have our basic kit. So that initial sequence, uh, sorry, that, that, that drum sequence there, the main thing, it has a hi-hat continually riding in the background. I'm not absolutely sure what the name of the, um, the articulation of the, of the hi-hat is. It's not particularly tight. It's just a kind of loose, um, like a sort of pedal, pedal hit or something like that. But it, it sounds something. Do that. So, anyways, there's just a hi hat continually going in the background on this, and uh, and then it's a question of well, is it a is it a low tom that's playing in the background? Or is it a bass drum? It's certainly not a bass drum like that. It's a lot more op open bass drum. So I thought I'd switch to a different drum kit and try a few of these different drum kits. And the one that I found that, that was probably closest to it was the Easy Drummer 2 Vintage. I went for the heavy compressed version, so we've already got a little bit more um, compression on the drums to start with. And then we've got a bass drum that sounds a lot more... So it could, you know, it could be a bass drum like that, but it could be that together with the ring of a tom. So don't know. It could be the two of them together, but that'd be a bit weird, wouldn't it? So maybe in the intro, it's it's the tom, and then during the actual main 
uh, bit with the snares and the cymbals. It's the it's the bass. I just don't know. Uh, I can't tell by can't really tell by listening to it. Uh, so let's have a look at the articulations on the hi hat. We've got op open pedal. Hold on a second. Yeah, closed pedal. That's that's it because it's not a tight. It's not that sort of really tight hi hat sound. It's just a it's just a gentle hi hat sound. So so we go for closed pedal, which is a one on my keyboard. Um, it's that one on my keyboard. So and on the on the floor tom, definitely go for the lower version. Because the lower one's uh, sixty, the sixteen-inch is uh, obviously lower than the forty, uh, the the fourteen-inch because it's bigger. So we'll go for that one, and then on the snare, the articulation on the snare is is more of a rim shot. It's not a sort of tight snared sound. It's more of a kind of again that got that sort of ringing sound to it. So uh, that's quite good actually, just as it is. But let's listen to the rim shot. Yeah, that's better. It's more like the original. Let's to go back to the original and just have a listen. It's not perfect, but it's roughly. Yeah. I'm not sure which, <laughs> which symbol do you pick? It doesn't have to all be from the same kit, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the same kit for this. That'll do. Just maybe not quite so bright. Right, so, so that's the kit I'm going to use for it. And the first thing I'll need to do now is just lay down that uh, that hi-hat section. But I'm going to do that with the keyboard. I mean, I could just put in a MIDI clip and just uh, copy out some some taps and then... But I want to get the sort of natural, the varied velocity on it that you get when you just tap it out on a keyboard. And I might push everything up a bit, but it'll all be, it'll, it'll all be sort of varied within it in itself. So we'll do that now. Uh, what's the... The tempo is something like... Um, just, let me just go back and get a listen. Okay. 8661. So it's about it's about 90 BPM tempo. And uh, four four is okay. Yeah, that's all right. I'll leave the metronome on for now. So I'll, I'll put in, I'll just record the, I'm just, actually, I'm going to go to my mixer and increase my volume on the headphones slightly because I can hardly hear what I'm doing. Right. These aren't closed headphones, so if you might be able to hear it a little bit through the mic, but hopefully you'll hear it louder on the, on the tutorial itself. Okay, so I'll just select all of those. Control A, select them all. I'm going to push the velocities up on all of them, but as you see down the bottom here now, we have varied velocities depending on the stresses of my hand as the, as a, well, there is a pattern to it naturally, but uh, uh, it, it just varies it a little bit. So we'll push all of them up and they all go up with the same variety on them. But I want the, want the hi-hat to be fairly, fairly loud, so. Uh, we can now we can loop that because I've just put the loop markers in with the uh, start of bar five because it's a this is a four bar sequence here four bar clip it's a bit off isn't it I'm going to quantize that I don't, I don't like quantizing too much but yeah they are all a bit off. <laughs> 
So let's let's loop it out a few times. And let's just see how it sounds with the um, tom. Okay, that's pretty good. I think I think that tom sounds quite quite good like that. So I'll record the tom on here as well. And the first tom is is uh, uh, is on the beat it precisely, but the rest of them are on the on an off beat sort of just before. So if you take a listen, it starts with a cymbal and a tom, but then the rest of them are on uh, sort of on the off beat. Yeah, so we'll do that. We'll put the first one in manually here. But what we'll have to do, because we've because we've looped this, we don't want this to affect the rest. So we'll just do a Control E on here and cut this clip, sep uh, cut this cl clip and make it separate from the rest. And then we'll put the the tom on uh, wherever it is. F1 and the symbol as well, which is up here somewhere, I think. A little bit gentler than that, maybe. Right, so we've got those first two in now, I'll just record the rest. And we've got to make sure overdub is on, because otherwise when I record, it'll wipe the rest of the stuff as I'm going along. So uh, so make sure that's on. And uh, hit record. And then it breaks into the main bit. So we'll just do this bit for now, I think. And there is another symbol, isn't there, on in this clip? So it's, because we've done an overdub and re-recorded, it's now separated this off from the loop anyway. So we've got a split here anyway, uh, which is useful. So we, we, I think there's a symbol on the fifth bar too. And that first tom is maybe a little bit quiet there compared to the rest. Oh, no, that's one. it's the tom I want. Right, so let's take a listen to that. Uh, I'm not going to quantize the tom, the floor tom for now, because I don't know whether it'll do it properly, whether it'll sound right. It, I think it'll sound a little bit synthetic. So I'm just going to leave it as it is and see how bad my timing is. Ah, no, that's not right, is it? Because that symbol has got to be on this exactly when the tom comes in. No, it's, which is actually not... You can't really see. You can't see very well with this colour scheme. Yeah, that's the only problem with it. I'm going to change the colour scheme. I, I do like this colour scheme, but you can't see anything. Uh, well, where do I change the colour scheme? Look and feel, isn't it, or something like that? No, oh, no, that isn't. This is look and feel. Where's the? Where the color? Oh, disco. Here we go. Default. You see now, that's better. I can see what's going on now. I can see these lines clearly in here. Hmm. I do like the darker, darker look though. But this is uh, more helpful for this. So my hand has it here, which. Maybe isn't maybe isn't quite right, so maybe we put it there. We put the symbol there as well and see how that sounds. Uh, 
Now that sounds wrong, doesn't it? Let me listen back to the let's listen back to the track because. I don't know if there is another symbol, actually. Oh, no, it is at the... St it is at the start. It is on the bar, isn't it? I think it is, so let's try that again. doing wrong here that just doesn't sound right I don't want to get my account closed down for having played this too much or something no no it isn't no 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 that's not right that's not right where does it sit Yeah, I think that's right, isn't it? I'm sure there are people out there that are looking at this and just thinking, you know, if you if you if you're watching this just out of interest and you're just thinking, come on, you should be able to do this. It's really easy. Let me just restress the fact that this is just a learning curve for me. I'm just just trying it out because because I want to try it out. All right, I'm not trying to prove anything. I'm not trying to say this is the right way to do it or anything like that. I'm just simply putting ideas down. So, uh, you know, I don't want any, any people coming back and saying, saying, oh, you should have done it. Well, actually, if you can give me some suggestions, I'm very open to suggestions on how I should be doing it, but not the whole sort of whingy sort of, oh, that's a, that's a, that's a crap way to do it. Why are you doing it like that? So, um, no negativity, please. Uh, That one, first one's a bit off, isn't it? Okay. Right, we're 18 minutes in, and I haven't got too much done, to be honest, so I'm going to leave it at that for this one. I'll probably continue doing the rest of it in a bit, but uh, for now, <laughs> see you later.